the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah? Can I get an amen? Amen. I thank you very much. So um, the main thing that I want you guys to know today is that for all of our visitors, I just ran into someone who knew me. How old were you when I was there, may I ask? It's okay. From St. Stephen's, that's one of the places I did my internship. So now you're all grown up. Alicia. So it's kind of freaking me out. And she has kids. But that's how the world turns, right? So we're glad you're here. If there are any other um, visitors, we welcome you today. Uh, please know that this is a gathering between, we have a shared parish between Zion and Waterville and St. Paul here in Haskin. And so uh, we just want to welcome everybody. What a glorious day this is. I'm also grateful that it is not raining at the present time and that the sun is shining. I'm giving thanks to God for that. Um, I also want to make sure you all know um, about the, this, this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, we're celebrating rogation days. And so tomorrow we have uh, the opening kind of ceremony out at Better Farms. So, um, and I think Bishop is blessing Better Farms. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Tomorrow afternoon, I think it's full. But any time that if there's anybody here that would like me to come at, to your place and bless your farm, your livestock, your home, your business, whatever that might be, in the next couple days, let me know, okay? Um, <clears throat> let's see. Today we also are in honor of Cinco de Mayo. Okay. You get this outreach uh, committee together at this at St. Paul, and you got to look out. <laughs> so, um, taco bar is what we're doing after church today. So please be sure that you come and join in some fellowship and, and a meal. Kind of Christ does set an example. So um, gathering around a meal is certainly part of who we are. Are there? Oh, and we get to have the kids today. Will be coming up for the first ten. You, I don't. You probably won't know it. I don't know it. So we're all learning it, okay? And but um, we're using it because it kind of has a, a Spanish, you know, Spanish. It's it's. There are words in the hymnal in Spanish, which of course we won't be singing uh, Spanish. But so, but the kids I would like the kids to come on up during that. Just you know me, I like them up here. And if you have an instrument. Uh, Miss Jen will help you out with that, but we're not just yet, Miss Jen. We'll wait until it's time, okay? And then after that, because I'm messing up the order here, so. Um, so, but if you want, your kids want to come up, uh, we'll let you know when it's time, okay? John has an announcement. I do, but I'm not Mike, so I have to remember to stand close to this thing today. Uh, so, I have been asked to announce about an event on Thursday. The Zion, it's, it's being sponsored, a gathering of a group called the Zion's Lady Lions. Woo -hoo! And they meet once a month, I think they meet, for lunch and for fellowship. And this month will be this Thursday at 11.30 at Outback on Dussel Road in Maumee. So all the ladies that would like to come out and join the Lady Lions for lunch on Thursday the 9th at Outback on Dussel at 11.30. You are all invited to come and join. Thank you. Janine has an announcement, announcement now. I have an too. announcement. So um, we are on the sixth Sunday of Easter. It's still Easter, y'all. Yep. And that means that this, 30 is, this Thursday is 40 days since Easter, which means it's Ascension Day. And there will be a conference-wide worship service at Solomon Lutheran Church 
at 6 p.m. to celebrate the Ascension of our Lord. Now, if you're interested in going to that, there's a free meal sponsored by Old Zim's afterwards, but I would like to count noses today if you're planning on attending that meal so that we have enough to eat. Okay. There's always There's enough, always to, enough eat to eat when we We're share what we have. That. So if you're interested, uh, the worship service is at 6 p.m. at Solomon, and Dan Boyle is the organist. Yay! Where's Dan Boyle? Uh, Dan Boyle is uh, Marilyn's nephew. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Any other announcements? I'll look straight at Jen because, I, yes, Deb. What's what? What what uh, degree? What did you study? Uh, I studied marketing, but it's a bachelor in science. Okay, bachelor in science. Excellent. Congratulations. Uh -oh, another yes. Question. Not yes. Oh yes, yes. I can't. Do you have an announcement? <laughs> Whose birthday? I couldn't hear. Your sister's birthday? It's Audrey's birthday? And who? Jacqueline and Audrey have birthdays. Ready? Stand up, kids. Where are we? Audrey, you got to stand, stand on up, girl. Ha happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mara. Okay, any? Yes, John, I knew it. Tuesday evening, 6 o'clock, outreach will be meeting here at St. Paul. Annie and everyone is welcome to join us. Just get prepared. If there are no other announcements, Please stand if you are able for confession. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here's water. Here's our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and in God's eternity forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we'd like the kids to come on up to help us with the first hymn. Um, instruments, you know that 
Our bodies are instruments. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Almost in first grade. going to have to sing really loud to be heard, I think. There's room. There's room here, honey. What's that? You have Jordans on. Oh, my daughter loves Jordans. Big, widen this circle. Here, can you, yeah, let's even widen it here. Nicely done. Great big, wide circle. Yeah? Yeah, exactly. Hi, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Audrey, and happy birthday, Jacqueline. Okay, today we get to hear Jesus say something that's very important. He says that we are supposed to love one another, and he also says, you didn't choose me, I chose you. And that's what I want to hear you to hear this morning, okay, is that God chooses you every day, all day long, um, he brought you into the family uh, through the waters of baptism. And in 
that choosing, he is loving you. You know how when you come up and I make the sign of the cross on your forehead, what do I usually say? I say, Jesus loves you, is with you all the time, and I love you too, right? So this is all about love. So what I hope that you'll be able to do is that you'll be able to, when you leave church on Sunday and you go to school tomorrow, or you can do it at home in your family, good place to practice, you let people know that you love them, okay? And you might even want to take, I don't know, a chance and tell people, Jesus loves you too, okay? Let's pray. Um, I'll go ahead and just pray. You don't have to do it after me, okay? We'll just, okay. God, thank you for your love that you sent to us through Jesus. Thank you for making us your children, beloved and honored and chosen. Help us to tell the world about your love. And all these things we pray in your tender name. Amen. Thanks for coming up, y'all. Going out the side door. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And one of these days I'm going to have the courage to actually sing this, but it. today's not the day. <laughs> we'll sing back to you. How about yeah. that? Okay. Is that? Okay, I'm good with that. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Oh Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Oh Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Oh, Lord Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that, loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen.
First readings, Act, chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised belie believers who had, be who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had it poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and excelling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. From Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout out joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the new voice of song. With the trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King of the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell the rain. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the word the world with righteousness and the people with equity. Second reading, John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, who has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that the love the children <coughs> by this we know the love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments, for the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water, only but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I would ask if you are able, if you could stand for the reading of today's gospel. Today's gospel is from John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. This is the Holy Gospel as recorded by John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Please pray with me before the word is proclaimed. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our collected hearts be honorable and truthful and holy and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock 
and our crucified and risen Redeemer. Amen. Amen. You know, in John's Gospel, there are all these I am statements, and so I've often thought about bringing, in, bringing it in from, like, during that prayer um, from the psalm to say all of those I am statements. I'll have to remember to try to do that some Sunday. Um, I think it's extremely important. There are several things I want to point out about today's gospel reading. Uh, first, it is that we've been loved, and that is the primary commandment. So, to love God above all else, and our neighbor as ourself, this is what we have been created and bound together to do. This is what we have been saved for, this is what we are called to in the world. And the other thing that really, um, you know, we do Pericope study every Wednesday. So one of the things that hit the group was this idea of Jesus now saying to the disciples, who, let's face it, are as clueless in this gospel as they are in the other three gospels, right? He's now calling them friend. You are my friends. That's one of my favorite old um, hymns, right? What a friend we have in Jesus. I sing that a lot as a prayer. But what Jesus has been doing and what the writer of this gospel has been doing all along is saying there is a relationship. This is not some sort of like, eh, it's, it's, it's bound in the flesh and blood and bone of Jesus. Jesus and the Father are one. We have heard it through this whole gospel. We heard it at the beginning of the I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me and I abide in you and I abide in the Father, the Father abides in me, right? It can get a little bit like, huh? But what it is about is living in relationship. I think it's fantastic that we've come together as a parish in one place this Sunday because this gospel fits what we're doing here together. Um, so Jesus now calls them friend. And he's getting them ready for his walk to Golgotha. I will lay down my life for my friends. I can't tell you how many times I've said, I'll take a bullet for you, to someone, you know? I, are we willing to lay down our life for the people we love? Uh, I, I believe so many of you would, in a heartbeat without thinking. So, <clears throat> this is some serious business that Jesus is doing. It means we're called to live in relationship with Jesus, which calls us into relationship with the one whom he calls Father, who calls him beloved Son, whom we call Creator, the God who is above anything we will be able to get with our created brains. However, all we need to know about this God that Jesus is one with is this, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that people might be saved. And Jesus says, I haven't come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world, the cosmos, might be saved. From the beginning, we've been hearing about God's love. What does that love look like? I want to now shift into uh, Lazarus has been raised from the dead. That, that sealed it for, for Jesus. The uh, the Jewish religious leaders were not happy with that, all right? And so they're looking for a way to destroy him. And what happens then after that is that they gather at Martha and Mary's and Lazarus' home, Jesus and the disciples, and they um, share a meal. But part of what happens at that meal is Mary takes a jar of costly perfumed nard. She opens it. She anoints Jesus' feet. She kneels at the Savior's feet and anoints him. Judas doesn't like this, and Jesus says, you know, lay off. 
She's anointing me for my burial. Then what happens is we move into, they gather for Passover, the third Passover in this gospel. And what happens uh, during the meal? As for those of you who attended Seder, right? There's like several times we have to wash our hands throughout that meal. So there's also other washing that happens with feet. So he takes out his outer robe, he wraps a towel around himself, and he washes the disciples' feet. He becomes the servant. And he says, this is where a lot of this love, uh, this commandment of love, a new commandment I give to you, we hear it there, that you love one another. As I have loved you, so you love one another. So then we get into the vine. Jesus is saying, you know, the Father and I are one. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't worry. You are in this, you're living in this love relationship, this love friendship. It's intimate now. There's no more of this, like, when there's a master and a servant, there's an unequal distribution of power. Someone has power over. And Jesus has now called the disciples into a new relationship of friendship and love. So, friendship and love. And the third thing is chosenness. Jesus is very clear. You didn't choose me. I chose you. This should come as great comfort to us. That I've been praying that, that verse all week long. Jesus chose us. God chose you. God chose me. God chose the world. God chose the cosmos. This, this love then looks like servanthood. It looks like getting down and kneeling at our neighbor's feet, at our enemy's feet, at the poor and hungry, that first, the words, even if you didn't know the tune of that first hymn, go back and read those words as a prayer this week. So that is what we are praying that God will call us into, is that kind of oneness. So this idea that somehow or another we choose God, <laughs> no not according to this gospel in today's reading. And God comes to us then as servant, and that love, so the question that, that we came up with as we sat and chatted was, what does this love look like? It looks like servanthood. It looks like friendship. It looks like the kind of... Um, Courage, that love, that uh, it's agape, right? It's, it's self-giving love. And it looks like the kind of love and connection that'll take a bullet for their friends instead of disagreements or arguments or, I don't know, whatever, dis discord, in the family of God, instead of that, we're called to love one another. We're called to be patient. We're called to communicate. We are called to worship. We are called to serve. We are called and equipped with so much more, and God gives us God's holy breath, the same breath that brought everything into being out of nothing. It's the same breath that brings us here today. It's the same breath that fills us up and does give us courage to walk into the world to say, I love you, and I know that Jesus loves you too. Now, so John is great at coming up with these like visual kinds of things. I am not. So now I've asked John to kind of take his part in today's proc. I'm adequate at coming up with visual 
No, you're not. I would not use the word great. And actually, um, it, this is something that we're going to put up on the board that I didn't create. It was actually um, part, of, part of joining together as a parish. It has been our combined council. Um, and I'll come back to that in a little bit. But um, there's a, this is, Meg and I talked about how we started. What did it look like when we started? And we had a council meeting just last month, and Stacy Anderson introduced this idea of this, I think it's called a Venn diagram, and we went through it as a group um, pictorially. So I thought, this is sort of how it looked like when we started. We were, we were two churches across the river from each other that we might have met on occasion by accident, but we were, we were two separate groups, right? Um, and then we started talking, this was when Pastor Steve was here and we stopped, and Meg hates this, this visual, but we, Steve called it dating, right? That we were sort of in this beginning part of this joining together as a parish, getting to know each other and whatnot. And there's a second, and we became sort of morphed into this, this is what this relationship started to look like, right? We started to have some things in common, which is in the purple right there in the middle. We started to do a few things together. We started to meet together as a council. We, we Lusher Park, where we had a service in every July outdoors that we, we did a couple of things together to see how this relationship was going, okay? And as time went on and as, as we continued to gather together in our relationship, right? We have, we have been called, as Meg pointed out, we've been called to this love relationship. Okay, we did, we did, God chose us for this. Yes. He chooses us again and again and again. And we just simply follow. And when, as we follow, what do we discover? We discover that we have more and more and more in common. And I don't know about you, but I can see it. From this, from standing right here, I can see it. Amen. I can see it in these kids when they join. Preach. Okay? Uh, for First Communion, right? Oh. The training them for First Communion as a parish, and having these kids come together. I can see it in a joint choir that's yeah. going to be singing up here in, in a few minutes. I see it, okay? Not, not just joining together, but friendship. Okay? She's talking about, Jesus is talking about we are all friends of Jesus. And that, that, that's what's in that purple. That's what that purple is telling us. That we have that same call as friends of Jesus. To be each other's friends. And I can see it. There was a time when we had a combined service. When I could count on the St. Paul folks being over here. And the Zion folks being over there. I could count on that. I don't see that today. Okay? That's become... That's become different. Okay? I can see us becoming friends. Friends with each other, closer to Jesus. And you can see it. You just keep your eyes open and your hearts open to it as we move forward. This is a process. All right? This does not happen overnight. This is what, four years in the making now, probably? But it's happening. And it's growing. It's growing. Last week at First Communion, between the two congregations at each individual church, we had 35 young kids. There was 18 kids in my circle. I don't know how many were up there today, but I think it was more than 18. It's growing. So don't, like Jesus said, don't be troubled. Don't worry. Right? And what, what can we be? What can we be? What can we be? We can be in a space where there are no just parish-wide, right? This is not just 
This doesn't just happen within our parish. Imagine if Northwest Ohio were like this. Imagine if the Northwest Ohio Synod became this, right? All friends, because we're all friends of Jesus. Keep your hearts, be active. Join us. We're having a taco bar. I'm really excited about taco bar. Like I said, if it, if it crashes and burns, it was not my idea. <laughs> I was at the meeting, and I might have said something about tacos, but they took it and ran with it. They did. <laughs> but take heart and continue to join us. Continue to be servants. Continue to take bullets for your friends, mm. those that you love. That's, that's, that's how Meg said, how are we going to bring this to our congregation? That's how we bring it to our congregation. Because we get on our knees, Serve, serve. It's, we need lots of help. Mm. This, this, we, this does not happen with a group of five or six or seven people. Okay, this happens with the hearts and the hands and the feet of all of us here. Yeah. So there is a constant invitation for you to join us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to bring it on home from there. <laughs> so third article of the creed. I'm always reminding John of this, right? Always. Ad nauseum. So I believe in the Holy Spirit, and Luther starts it out by saying, I believe I cannot by my own understanding come to Jesus as my Lord except by the power of the Holy Spirit that calls, gathers, enlightens, and sends us out and joins us to the church of every time and every place. We are a Christ-centered community, first and foremost. And it's the spirit that pulls us into one so that we can be vehicles of God's love in the world. And I'm telling you, for that, I say, thanks be to God. Now we get to hear our choir.
If you care to follow along with the music for the hymn of the day, you can find it in the blue hymnal on page 765. And can we stand if you're able, please? you to join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and in the life everlasting. Amen. If you are able to remain standing, I know this is something I tend to forget, but... Uh, for the prayers of intercession, I would invite you to do that. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your Holy Spirit falls upon all who hear the word. Fill your church with the gifts of your spirit and give understanding hearts to those who strengthen our commitments with our ecumenical and interreligious partners, God of grace, hear our prayer. You speak and the face of the earth is renewed. Revive your creation that habitats and every kind of living thing might flourish. 
protect endangered species and help us to care for all your creatures. God of grace, your world is divided and the nations rage. Grant wisdom and vision to world leaders that they may seek justice, peace, and the good of all. Strengthen international partnerships and cooperation. God of grace, your children are in need. Comfort all those who suffer, especially those afflicted with anxiety, depression, and mental illness. Help us be conduits of your love in our care for one another. God of grace, your work is done in this place with our hands. Bless the ministries of this congregation. Um, there are too many to name. Um, Lord, we just pray that you bless them all, that they all embody your love for the world, that they inspire those who plan and lead worship. Uh, we pray for council members and committee members and volunteers. God of grace, your blessed saints now rest in you. Give us thankful hearts for those who have gone before us. At the last, bring us all together around your heavenly banquet table. God of grace, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please let us share the peace. From Zion, there are envelopes that we passed out for offering to be collected, and I'm going to suggest that all loose uh, cash be divided between the two. 
uh, congregations. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Passover Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
As often as you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Remember us in your kingdom, our vine, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is Christ's meal. This is the fruit of God's love. You are all welcome here.
invite you to stand if you're able. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and our friend. Amen. Amen. I also want to at this time say the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen. We sing our sending hymn.
the Holy Spirit is definitely in this place. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.